control the ecosystems and for your safety. Please it controls and recycles is... water and nutrients. Hey, Mike. and minerals. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. One of those living systems is the rainforest home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicine, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the muddy buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Oh, that's in the restaurant, man. I'm interested about the earth and how important the land is. In Japan, we're learning that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, we can make farmland more fertile without the need of chemicals. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for chemical pesticides by breeding and using natural predators like ladybugs and wasps to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land. Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. 
are the flowers? The tropics are home to the greatest diversity fruit. of plants <laughs> on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. They are right here. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical banana. plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. He's teaching his stuff, man. Now look at the fish. We're gonna see some fishes out right there. Hybrid tilapia. Wow. Are you serious? When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish. But fish farming or aquaculture accounts for nearly half of the bass Tilapia, bass, and catfish, like the ones you see here, are three of the more popular crops raised by fish farmers. Catfish. The sustainable system we're using here recycles the water in the tanks. As a result, we're able to save millions of gallons each year. Our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt wow. Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts to produce accountable harvests <laughs> big one and top. still protect the natural resources. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. cherry seeds, right? Yeah. Buddha's hand. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar yeah. with the handful that make tea. up our everyday yeah, diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. Oh, no, they don't have that basil. Look, these plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques oh, like these increase yields while more Mike, efficiently Mike using had resources yeah. like water, fertilizer, okay. and pesticides. Yeah. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests, like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Those kale over there, those kale are big. Big! Kale over there. And what are these? I love some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. Eat while you go. <laughs> right? Sorry, Mike. We make we make juice out of that in Jamaica, Mike. Sorry, juice. Look. Yeah. 
The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects.